be like a ventriloquist and shit, like. Yeah. I'll be. I'll, I'll be funny. Okay. Yeah, the metal right. ventriloquist. I'm gonna flip you guys back over. Just continue your conversation. Hold on. Hold on. What were we talking about? What were we talking? Pantera dead posers. Dead posers. I want to talk. Could fit that in. What happened with Pantera to that point? Uh, what are we talking about? <laughs> It's good, it's good that everyone's sober right now. Yeah. Well, I actually work better with drinks at me. Yeah, I know. I was trying to do the transition thing. Sure, we'll do an addition to the show like that, but it has to be in a day when we don't all have to go to work. Yeah. We're back, and this thing is still rolling right here. What's up with that? Where's that sound coming from? It's a different thing. Oh, moving that. I did, because I'm trying you know, to download the file. We can't take this off, because it's an ad. Take it off, just hit X. It's an extra window. Oh, fuck, man. What the hell are you doing? I don't know. Oh, my hit God. Hit the fucking X. I can't see, you got your thumb on it. Hit it, there you go. I back Zena, and we are back with this metal show, pilot number two, and we're, uh, we're continuing with uh, Rob and, and KMX, and we're going, they're going to be uh, talking about, uh, what, 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 you know, what the hell were we talking about? All things real fucking metal, not the okay, Eddie so Trunk shit. I'm still doing the pose. Or the, oh, no, we don't cut anybody down on the show. <laughs> I'm kidding, we're Eddie. We're just going to build ourselves up, okay? Or we're back live with... With Robin Kevin! With Robin Kevin. Robin Fab. Robin Fab show. <laughs> Robin Fab. Who are you, Fab? I don't know. I'm, Is that sweetened or unsweetened? He's got to be, because I'm there. Rob. KMX. What? Is it sweetened or unsweetened? It's pretty much empty. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> It didn't really taste sweetened. Okay, you guys, back on. Okay, so anyway, we have been talking about Pantera Circuit Trend Kill. <laughs> and we have been talking about the five album rule. <laughs> the five, the way so many bands run out of steam after five albums. Then we started talking about posers. Then we started talking about trends in the 80s to the 90s. And then what nerds we all were. And what nerds we all were. And then there's what I call the vh oneification of metal. Which started to happen sometime. We started to happen sometime in this millennium when metal became something that, like, our nerdy comedians would, would would talk about. Then all of a sudden, you could name drop Dio and Mayhem. You couldn't really name. You weren't allowed to say the word Dio for about I, th I think a good 20 year period. Well, like like we were just saying, you know, about when we were growing up in schools and shit. You know, it's so much different today because uh, back then, you know, me anyway. Metal's my life. Anyone who knows me knows that. And back then, if you liked metal, it had to show you like metal. You had to have long hair, wear the shirts, whatnot. But I know some like short hair, buzzed heads, whatever. There's no difference today, man. But it's so much different today, and it's a love for the music because the metal genre is our biggest genre music on this fucking planet. I mean, it's so big, there's so many undiscovered bands. Shitty bands, too, in the genre, but, you know, it's the biggest genre there is. As it seems that way to me. I mean, I, I can't tell you how many different subgenres of reggae there are. I don't know. I don't, I don't listen to reggae. <laughs> or hip-hop or any other stuff out there. But, yeah, that's the thing. Metal is its an atom that's been splitting and splitting and splitting and splitting and splitting since about 1967. Eventually, you just got to come to terms and say, metal. But, in all honesty, it's fun to split it up into different genres and, and talk about it. It's, it's always cool. It's always fun to talk about metal, you know? Go to a show. I'll miss bands because I'm in the corner at the bar talking to someone about. You find another old head in there. Yeah. You run into Mega Dan. You're like, hey, yeah. Mega Dan, what about? And someone's like, oh, so and so took stage. It's like, yeah, well, and you, I've seen him before. I'm here, but you know, I'm talking to this guy now. You know, a good conversation. You always find good conversation at a show. It takes a minute to configure. See, now, as I was growing up, metal was supposed to be on its way out. Maybe some could argue. Oh, goodbye, goodbye, Sean. I'll talk to you soon, Sean. Right, later, guys. Talk to you. All right. Come on, guys. So I guess we keep on going then yeah. while the camera's on here. <laughs> See, when I was growing up, metal was supposed to be pretty much drying up and dying. And right, it'll it, never happen. You know, what happened? But that's when, that, that's when pop culture wouldn't acknowledge it during that period. Like M MTV, it was like 93, 94. All of a sudden, even like Megadeth couldn't get a video on MTV. Just White Zombie. 
They are the only metal band you could possibly see on MTV. So as far as everyone else is concerned, you know, the, the people thought Pantera was this like underground fringe act. <laughs> Well, Pantera something. have been around for a long time before they made it big. I they mean, did, but the they thing used is, to wear makeup and shit. Yeah, they used crap. to wear makeup. Yeah, I, I have those records, but it's like Far Beyond Driven <clears throat> comes out, goes to number one. Everyone th thought they were underground band at the time because yeah. MTV and radio wouldn't acknowledge it. There was this sort of pop culture exile, right? And then, and then you had the first wave of thrash bands. They had all pretty much just died off or changed their sound out of selling out or maybe out of necessity. But that's when I start getting into it and I start reading about it and there's this great used record store, uh, you know, 20 minute walk away from where I live called Plastic Fantastic. Yeah, Plastic Fantastic! Is Repo Records still open? Is yeah. That still uh, that, that, in, in Philly it is, but uh, the one in Bryn Mawr, the one I, I actually uh, li ended up living right next to where that was, yeah. that that went yeah. under and I think, I think around 2000. You know, you know what gets me? You got your certain bands in metal who made it big, and then people, after they make it big, it didn't take them long to make it big. As soon as they hit the scene, like White Zombie and shit, you know, they got commercial. Yeah, they got White Zombie. And then these bands that make it big, people want to tell, call them sellouts and shit. <laughs> but what, that but just goes to succeed? show. Don't you want to succeed? Yeah, yeah that right. just goes to show there's metal bands out there that are great musicians, and it goes to show metal. It's a These jealousy. metal musicians are not slacking. They're busting their ass, blood, sweat, and tears, and they're talented motherfuckers. You know, it goes to show. Yeah, we have so few. There's so few people. I know. I can think of like. I can't think of any metal bands in the area that are actually like close to making it. Making it. Like I know some who are signed and who are touring. Mm -hmm. But all those guys, you know, they're, they're losing money whenever they're on the road. Because it's coming out of their own pocket. Yeah, it's I mean, coming out of their own pocket or they're leaving a job. They, if, they're, if, they're, if they're touring through a record label, they, they can't work, you know. They, they can only, in other words, they have to leave their job and tour for three months and then go back and scramble to find some way to make a living in yeah. some, some, some cheap spot to live you're, in. You're lucky if you can keep your job after you take a tour. <laughs> exactly. V very lucky on there because if you, if you tour more than two weeks and you, then your company won't give you more than two weeks of paid vacation. And you can only be sick so many times. <laughs> yeah, yes. Yeah. So you throw all those things into play and all of a sudden you don't have, that's why I know a lot of bands starting out, they'll do that one, they'll take that week-long tour. Yeah. Everybody takes vacation around the same time, they'll get booked in a bunch of holes, hole in the walls throughout the country. They'll do that trip, they'll come back there. I've never done that. I've, I've always thought about that. It seems like such a crap shot gamble because it's so hard to book a, a decent show anyway. And well, I mean, you, you know what's cool being, you know, in our area, there's venues. You know, diehard metalhead, especially in a band, we'll go do the show, still make the work the next day. I know people that'll say, oh, I, I can't go to that show because I got to get up for work in the morning. And the show, like last night, I know about five people. I know about five people that didn't go to that Ice Star show because they said I got to get up at six in the morning. That show was, we left that show by 11 o'clock and we were home in a half hour. That's why you know, I got a wife at home and won't let him go. It, it's fucking metal. Stay yeah. up, man. You only live <laughs> once. You live once and some of these bands only come through so often, you can say you've seen them. Fucking stay off. You know what? Go no, to the fucking show. It's the bands that don't stay that are worse. Yeah, it's Dutch. Well, oh, yeah, that's more of a local the show thing. Grab my <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. Lo local scene right now. It's like it's we 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 got what we got there. There's no point complaining about it and saying hey, there's not enough. So, so support out there because we, we can't change <laughs> the attitudes of every single person around there. Like the yeah. support's growing too. I mean, I some t when I go to Jimmy's Allentown, uh, Jimmy's. I notice the place. Every time I go, there's more people that was there and there's than the last show too. I went to. There's and I think more, it's and, and there's a lot more girls showing up to the metal shows. Yeah. Also, especially at Jimmy's. People always complain that they call sausage fest, okay? But there's, there's not less enough of, women. There's less but of Jimmy's, I mean, I think of I think, and, and I'm about to shout out to my girl, freaking um, Alessa Decay. She's yeah, most she's always there. She's my most metal girl. I know her and her yeah. Indiana, and she's always up there, and she's always always the front of the stage, always rooting on whoever's up there, oh, I, and she's yeah. the most metal person there. So there's oh, women now, guys. Rest assured, you can go to a metal show and meet a nice girl now, okay? Can you? Yes. And I'll tell you what, it's a lot less of a chance of there being a bunch of lesbians there because I'll tell you what. Every, I don't know what that's an epidemic lately. I, it is. Lesbians don't like metal. <laughs> no, they do love metal, actually. But 
Um, I'm just saying, a lot of guys say, well, you know, metal show, you know, it's, it's changing. It really is going back. It's, there are some real authentic metal kids, and they're not all in their 40s either, okay? When you get out of the major cities, there's actually more grassroots support. Oh, especially for, for up the, in Lehigh, at the yeah, whole area. Yeah, in the Lehigh Valley. Valley it's different. It's, 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 Philadelphia has a Philadelphia. basic problem in Philadelphia. It's, it's uh, indie. So many venues, so many shows going on. Actually, you know what? There's no, but there's no metal. It's mostly uh, indie and a lot of metal posers. There's a lot of no, metal fest without metal bands. There's three or four metal shows a month in Philly. Easily. Uh, easily. I but mean, the venues are yeah, closed. A lot of them ain't even at the Chark no more. The Chark no, no, no. Barbary. Barbary. Yeah, that's where you go for metal. The Chark used to be the venue. To, and that's now, a, Reverb and Writing stealing a lot of bands. Reverb's awesome, I heard. that venue. Yo, shout out to, shout out to um, uh, Frank Phobia. We have to, yeah, we're going to be live the from there with Psycho of, Stick. On in the, terms of just, uh, just regular local shows in there. There's, I mean, most of the venues in Philly will carry metal here and there. So, I mean, you know, Brenda's might have something. The M, M, M Room has a lot of metal lately. JR's yeah. might have something. I've never been to JR's. Okay, yeah. JR's, yeah, because shout out to, um, what's his name, Grim, uh, what's his name over there? He does Steve a lot of metal. Earth, uh, he does, uh, yeah. They, John they, Smith, John Smith. They had that there. You, you got you got Mojo 13 not far away oh, from here. Oh, that's totally metal. You got O'Reilly's. Mm -hmm. I'm saying O'Reilly's now in Le on Lehigh Avenue is freaking badass. Yeah, yeah. I'm saying any given month in Philly, there's you a can lot have of metal. Three or four local metal shows. And but don't no expect to see a great metal show at, let's say, Dobbs or uh, one of these more mainstream places. Really what? doesn't know really about. True, putting together a true metal show. Well, I've, well, I've yet to see it anyway. The Dobbs is kind of like the the shotgun attempt, where it's like sh just th sh throw a bunch of ideas up the wall and see what sticks. Yeah, they do, a lot, lot of people do business that way. There's, there's no. Right. There's APB out. Has anybody seen Sean's keys? Whose purse was sitting on the chair upstairs in the middle chair? Is that yours? I'm the only one with a purse. Check and make sure you didn't buy a purse. <laughs> I think I'm the only one with a purse in the sure room. You room. never know. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Damn, Damn Sean, and we ain't drinking. Oh. <laughs> Who the fuck took my keys? You know what, let me check my other bag. Must have been Dutch. Oh, wait, wait, hold on, let me Dutch did disappear. <laughs> <laughs> Probably went for a joyride. Dutch took your car, but the car's still there. No, the car's there and it's locked, so I brought the keys back in. Hmm. You may just have to stay here, Sean. You may stop. Shh. I'm going to get here. to work tomorrow morning. Oh, I'll take you to work. Wait a minute, wait a minute. No, wait a minute. I'm oh, the look at that. You, <laughs> there he is. He's okay. getting senile in his old belly. I mean, not that I put anything else on top of that fucking speaker. My, my death toes five. And, it's, and there's the ashtray, too. That's where it went. Yep. God damn it. Sorry, guys. Okay, but it, The old man has left the house. Mine is slipping. All right, Sean, talk at you, brother. Okay, so anyway, it's wrong to single out and complain. I, I've seen some people complain about Dobbs just because of the way no, they do okay, it. Okay, but, but I should never mention Dobbs. Like, a single yeah. one. See, that's what happens. Okay, I'm gonna say it's it's wrong. What I'll say is this: I'm saying it's some some venues try that little shotgun technique. Is there? They'll take a, a bunch of bands that technically on a Thursday night. Yeah, yeah, that that technically categorizes metal and put them on a show and hope they can bring a bunch of people out to that, and then hope them. Okay, these bands are supposed to be a draw, so put them with them and them and them. People will come. Or they'll pick somebody who knows what they're doing. Like uh, what's his name from uh, uh, Robinson's Garage? Yeah, but they, I'm saying like so, yeah, some some the, some venues might do that. They might get bands that are from totally different subgenres of metal and put them on there and. And, and run in, into that, and that's like I said, that's. Or they'll pick up somebody like. Unless somebody it's rock really and metal what they're doing. All I want to shout out to what's the same from uh, from Abel Sultan Ryan. Ryan Mole. Ryan Mole. He was he was given the task of putting together a thrash fest. He put together a thrash and fest. And he did a great right, job. Yeah. Did a great job. You need to. Was pick. that the one with Faith or Fear the, at Jimmy's? Uh, no, 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 this, this was the Dobbs. And this is Dobbs. I, it's not who I would pick for a thrash fest, but he put together a great show. Yeah, he, he's in he touch. knew he knew he knew right. who we complement each other and who would draw numbers. Now, if I put together a thrash crowd, a thrash show, it, I would draw numbers too, but it'd be different in the bands. It's just so, what about exactly, yeah, you got someone who was yeah, Dobbs was putting like, together. I I'd when, do when, an Anvil bitch kind of show. He yeah, did yeah. That. When, when legendary Dobbs, when they, when they wanted to put together a thrash uh, thrash festival, they went through Ryan Moe, who's a, a guitarist from Rumpelstiltskin Grinder, who are the number one thrash band in Philly. See, I don't think of him as thrash. It's not Funny. Well, they, they, they kind of went away from thrash, and they got more of a death or so. But anyway, they're in touch with a lot of the extreme bands. And they know who draws who I and mean, who compliments yeah, whom. They, 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 they know who to bring. They know who they play with. They, they know who's going to get people. 
and they, they can do it much better than so, people who are maybe kind of into hard rock and are looking at sheets of paper going, well, he drew here, he drew here, he drew yeah. there. Any so band, does, yeah. so, uh, Any so, relapse band will draw a crowd. And so yeah. listen here, but then you, if you want to book a show, pick an expert in that genre. It's not just metal. You want a hardcore show? To call a hardcore show, you got to tap into people who, if you think you know what you're doing, you're wrong. Because if you don't know you know what you're doing, you don't know. If you need metal, call Keith Carney. Call somebody else. If you need hardcore, you're going to call a guy from Common Enemy. You're going to call Tony Cadaver. That, I mean, that, 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 that being said, the, the shotgun technique of just uh, putting a bunch of bands who fall under the metal uh, label on a bill, at the end of the day, that's not... That's not the worst thing in the world. That's not going to ruin anyone's life. And if you're, if you're doing something like that, if you're making a venture, it's sort of inevitable. Inevitable, you're going to do something like that at first. It, it's sort of. Uh, you just happen to pick like a very, very a, a, a genre of music where people are so passionate. They're very judgmental. And metal is metal. It's not metal. You know, be very careful what you call metal around metalheads. But in Philly, I mean, it's, it's, it, you know, what's metal? And if you're a metalhead, people know it's metal. It's not metal. Like we're sitting around one night and we had the show, and I was like mentioning, I said, Ovo. Was Ovo metal? I, I, I think they're metal, but I mean, I think you had a different opinion. I don't. You thought of them as more altern alterna metal, is what you call it. Alterna metal. Alterna metal is more of a progressive hard rock slash metal slash hardcore. Um, or, or yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. The, 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 yeah, the system of a down thing. The system of a down slash cannibal corpse slash whatever they got going on. Basically, what, what kept me kept me from calling them metal was all the. Yeah, 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 see, yeah, I, that's what I mean. See, no, 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 see no, no, I love that. Fuck shit. No, wait, no, 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 again, they're not. Again, they're not so much. So you wanted to kill me though. So wait a minute. For the record. For the record. Oh, oh, Ovalo is not a, uh, they're not a black Rob, metal Rob. Rob, did you want to kill me on the whole ride here from freaking from, from, from like oh, no, when I was sitting up? Sweet. When I was playing Ovalo in the car, I was like, these guys are awesome. You were probably like, found to puke. <laughs> no, I'm saying, no, I, I've seen Ovalo before a couple of well, times. Well, you know them personally was, anyway. I mean, but I mean, I just mean, talking, we're I'm, talking about the switching on and off of the different. I mean, they still keep in beats and shit. I mean, it's. They're very, hard, very heavy, yeah. But. Like so traditionally, you like metal. You are death metal to the core, these and bands, you don't sway. I mean, in terms bands, of what you like. It's, I'm one of the pickiest fucking dudes you ever meet when it comes. But see, to it's music. different from what you like and what you respect are two different things. Yeah, I, I mean, I do respect. I, I know talent when I see it, but I'm just stuck in my ways. Since I was 11, I grew up on thrash and death metal, yes. and I'm still going full blown with it. Well, we are who we are. And what we, what, we, what we play in our own vehicles, like when we're by ourselves, is basically, I mean, people are, are absolutely stunned to hear what I listen to. I mean, with all bands I work with, I mean, who do I listen to? Murder dolls, you know, the trashiest of the trashy, trashy people. I can't believe you listen to this crap. To me, that's what that's my drug, you know, that's how my outlet, and that's what I love to listen to when I'm with for pleasure. But most of the bands I work with, I hate to tell you, I would not listen to for pleasure, but I know who does, and that's why I'm good with working with them. But you can respect it, and, uh, and, if, you're, I do. and if you're metal, if you're Jimmy's, and Jimmy's is the most metal club I know around here, and right, it, and, 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 and shout out to Skip, yeah. but you can be you, you can appreciate as a metalhead, we can appreciate all our different levels of metal, but we all have such different levels, and it's so funny how picky we all are is Kevin Kevin he's a connoisseur of all things power and true metal it's unbelievable what he knows he's like a, and what you know about death metal I, you mentioned five bands I don't have any clue and to me I can't wait to hear him you know I can't but wait I throw in Monstrosity yeah, Monst great. One of the is that a band yeah yeah they're from and when I say that uh, they, they got a uh, one big claim to fame of them is that one of their old vocalists okay. went on to join Cannibal Corpse right after his Corpse Grinder. With them. Corpse Grinder. Yeah. Now, Corpse Grinder. He's one of the best vocalists in death metal, if you ask me. Like, he's. No, I'm, I'm not a Cannibal Corpse fan, but I'll tell you what, that one clip that I keep sending to everybody on Facebook is okay, a clip yeah. of them being in their studio is the most amazing piece of visual freedom. I can't believe it. It blows me away. It's like the most intense thing I've ever seen. I'm like, who is this band? Cannibal Corpse? Oh, Jesus Christ, this is the one that I say I'm not a fan of. But Jesus, if you watch that bass player, Holy crap! Alex Webster. Oh he's, my God, that is a musician. I mean, yeah, he writes all this shit. Oh my God, he unfucking believable. It, 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 if, if you just listen, uh, the, the, the great thing about this singer, it's like uh, people. People assume death metal is just a sort of a mindless thing when it comes metal. to the vocals, but it's like if you really, if you listen to him sing, he's he's perfect yeah. <laughs> because he, he, you don't even like. Uh, uh, he, he's so good you don't really take the time to notice so how much is going into it metal. like most of what he says most of his lyrics are pretty for death metal they're pretty understandable you can differentiate yeah. them it's like easy to, if you like the music you can yeah. make it out 
But like someone who don't listen to him to hear for us, I'll be like, what the fuck did he say? It's like, uh, you don't want to know, you know? Yeah, you don't know what he said, but saying he put on a lot of other bands and the vocalist just, uh, even if it's death metal, even if they're growling, the vocalist just can't carry it. Yeah. You know, they get too, some of them, for instance, they get down a little too low. It's and so they just deep, stay you there. can't make out any words. Yeah. You can't, you can't make any words. It becomes okay, this little. Death you're not supposed to make out words because their voice is used to the other. And you got to growl. No, there, there's lyrics there. They're yeah, actually but, but, saying. You got to growl, and uh, I'm saying, and, and it should but, be distinguish. There should be some something distinguishable about it. It's understandable. You're not always going to be able to understand the lyrics, but the more unique and distinguishable the voice. The better the vocalist. They say that it actually uses it as an instrument. Yeah, okay, but if yeah, if you can if you can use the voice as an instrument and as a voice, and you mastered it. That's what they're and, doing. And that's what Corpse Grinder does. You know, he's got he's got the best of both worlds. And then and again, one of the most beloved names in death metal, the founder, Chuck Schulder. You listen to him put on the philosopher, he could growl on key. He's he like could singing and he mean, could hold a melody while he was like he philosopher. He could he could sing that. I want to hear Rob growl on key. Like he could. Fuck the mic up, sweet. I'm gonna do that. I think you I'm know so much about nothing at all. Like I mean, he actually. I tell when he I love carried death. a melody. Yeah, I love Death every album. But I was I was like 12 when I started listening to Death. Scream Bloody Gore, Leprosy. Mm -hmm. Leprosy. Now those were fu that's where death metal started. I mean, yeah. that's mm -hmm. when. Did Seven Churches come out before Scream Bloody Gore? Possess Seven Churches? Yeah, did that uh, come out before Scream Bloody Gore or was that later on? So around the same time, actually. I mean, like, those, are like the, those are like the, the first two right there, right? Those were, yeah, those were <coughs> considered two of the first death metal bands. Who but was back, the first death metal band? It's either Death or The Possessed, one or the other. See, back then, you know, before these bands even came onto the scene and got noticed by anyone, a lot of those bands were behind the scenes as a band, like Napalm Death been around since fucking... Yeah. They were they first, but again, they, they fall under the grind. <laughs> That's the thing, yeah, now, now it's what we have today. Now I know grind is a big thing. Okay, no, wait, we're going to take one minute and break. I'm not, we're going to talk about Death Battle. We're going to take one minute break, so I'm going to do a break segment. And we're breaking to a clip of, let me see here, we're going to break to Clone Edition Critical, which is supposed to be the next biggest thing in Thrash, in the Philadelphia area. Shout out to Sean. Great scene. And my boys, we're going out of, we're going out of recording, and in Florida, we're going to Cannibal Corp Studio. I guess we're the bassist that owns it. I don't know. It's in, we're in St. Petersburg. Uh, recording in August, so I mean, can we talk about Cannibal Corp? Here, condition critical. We'll be back in three minutes, twenty seconds, with Rob and Cam. Actually, talk about. I want to. I want to hear more about this beginning of death metal things. I know very little about it. Very interested. There's death metal and there's grind. Okay, now stop. Uh, okay, keep going, guys. Let me just get this heat up. Are we still being recorded? No, uh, you're being recorded on the hard drive, but not on the not online. Oh yeah. So keep going. Hmm. Fuck yeah. I I I, I, I grew up on death, man. I mean, spiritual healing, human, great mm -hmm. album. All of them, man. I, I, they're another band that, like, right as I started to really get into metal, I started tracking down all their stuff. Because I was, I remember, I, I got Symbolic. I actually got that for Christmas. Great album. Right when that, right when that came out. So that's right when I was getting into them, in between, like, individual thought patterns and Symbolic. And I went back and I brought a lot of this stuff. I never really got into death metal, but they're the band I come back to the most. Here's, Oh yeah, we can really carry on a show like that. I think. Thank you. Really microphone. I'm just getting it working. Yeah. So for what? It, for what they use it for? I do not know. Mm -hmm. But at least if we know it's working, and it can be just switched on and off from your very presence. This is my. See, I've gotten so good at the soundboard. I'm so proud of myself. I've gotten so freaking good at it. It's off and on, off and on. You let me know, sweetie. Yeah, so talking about this, like, uh, hey. 